In the New Testament, is it verifiable that Christians can be attacked and oppressed by demons? Come on. God used controversy. Look, I'm on the list. He used CNN. He used the media. He used all of it to grow a massive size platform. Controversy built our platform. Two genders. It was never about the controversy. It was never about the politics. I thought it was. I thought it was about Trump. I thought it was about COVID. But God built our platform for deliverance. We are headed more into seeing prophecy fulfilled before our very eyes. There's a kingdom of righteousness and there's a kingdom of darkness. Something in our being craves something supernatural. If you're addicted to something, you have company. And he said in the last days, the church will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. They will begin to listen to demonic doctrines. He doesn't mind you going to church. He doesn't mind you praising as long as you don't change. There's a great awakening that is coming. The kingdom of God is not about talk. Jesus is king. It's about power and demonstration. The state of the church in the United States, I believe, needs a reawakening of deliverance because of the evil that's going around. Christians can be under the influence of satanic oppression. 100% they can. You see, redemption and salvation is for the lost. Deliverance is to set the captives free. The Word of God says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Kind of the enemy is to keep the church quiet. Deliverance is for the people of God. Deliverance is for the church. I'm here to call this culture to Jesus Christ and cast out demons. Because these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. The Messiah never put any restrictions up on anyone exercising the power of his name. He never did. And um, a lot of people assuming today that because you can use the power of his name, Yahshua or Jesus, they assume that they are a certain some type of power. And I'm trying to be careful with my words here. Um, that that makes them accepted in the kingdom of Yah. But it's just not so because even then, if I as I watched that clip and I looked at the deliverances we've been doing for over 30 years, and then I looked at what was going on there. Oh, yeah, sure, you can believer can cast out devils. Most people, what they don't understand about salvation is that when you first come to the Messiah in brokenness, in repentance, and you have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, that is just the first step into the kingdom. And then the rest of our life has to do with sanctification. The rest of it does. But what we're looking at in this particular situation here is this. You got Christians out there and they keep misusing the word by saying that the Bible says they're Christians. The Bible says they're Christians. The Bible don't say a damn thing to Christians. Not one damn thing at all. And that's the reason why these people who have a form of God is getting mad at us. But Yahshua said it better than what I could put words to. And I'm going to read it here real quick. In Matthew 7, 21, he said this. And I want everybody to listen real close, including all you come out in Jesus' name people. Listen real close. This is the words of Messiah. Write this down. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, then you will keep my commandments. Oh, in 1 John, he said, he that said that he loved me and keep not my commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Record that. Write that down. Matthew 7, 21 says, this is what Jesus said. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Master, Master, or Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that, here's the key word, doeth. What I saw from the outside looking in, I saw people who have a form of godliness, but I didn't see people who do the word. I saw people that are manifesting spirits um, and possibly getting a lot of them cast out and it's bringing in and drawing in people because of the same thing that we just saw the video before. It's something new. It's something that they've been in churches all their life. They've never seen it before. And they want to invite everybody else. Everybody gets caught up in sensationalism and all this stuff. But the king says, he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. And then he says this. And many will say to me in that day. What day? That's the day of judgment. They're going to say to him in that day. Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? That includes all you false prophets and false prophetess too. And in thy name, look at this. Here's the key. Have cast out devils. See, so some people think that it's a badge of acceptance. It's a way of passage because you can cast out devils and use his name to do it. No, the power's in his name. It's not in you. It's in his name. Then he says this. And in my name have done many wonderful works. So their pretension is, is Lord, Look, we prophesied. We've done your work. We've cast out devils in your name. We defeated the kingdom of Satan and people. We, we help people get set free. And then he's going to say this. And then will I profess to them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Watch this. Depart from me, you that work lawlessness. I guarantee you that none of those preachers, teachers, all those people up there would never, if you get finished doing all that casting out of devils, manifestation of devil, I guarantee that none of them are going to lead them to the obedience of the Messiah in keeping his commandments. And that's why many people are going to end up departing and going to the lake because they did all these mighty, wonderful works in his name. But he said a key word, I never knew you. What you did was you used the power of my name. Just like over in Acts 19, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You're trying to use the same power and the same spirit from somebody who's really truly Israel and born again. And you want to get all you want to get all the notoriety and stuff. Done. No, 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 no. The, the Lord gave me this platform. Yep, for this cause, y'all will send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie so that they all might be damned to believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteous. I saw a bunch of unholy, unsanctified, unruly, unlawful people in there. That's what I saw. I saw, yeah, devils manifested. I couldn't be there to say they got cast out because I didn't see that. I see manifestation. But the problem of today is, is people are working iniquity because they are transgressing his law by not keeping his commandments. And I'm going to end on this. The Most High Yah, Yahweh himself, he came down on Mount Sinai in a thick cloud of darkness. And the shofar began to wax loud and louder and louder and louder. And all of Israel was encamped around about the mountain. This was the first time in the history of mankind that all the people of Israel, every single one of them, heard his voice. And he said to them the Ten Commandments. You know the things he said in Psalms 89, I would not alter and change anything that's gone out of my lips. You know the same thing that Jesus said, John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Um, and First John, you, you'll keep my commandments because my commandments are not grievous. Nobody out there in Christianity in this lawless, wicked, wicked, satanic religion that there is, is trying to keep people or, or send people to be obedient to him. And they heard the voice. They heard the sound of trumpet. They heard y'all quote the Ten Commandments themselves and some way, somehow, this religion has been able to dupe people into thinking that you can do all this and don't be obedient to him 
And Jesus said, the reason why you're going to go to the lake is because you are workers of iniquity, <laughs> lawlessness. And that's why I never knew you because, you see, what kind of father is he if he doesn't expect obedience from his children? And what kind of children are you if you can't obey your father and do the things that he says? A lot of people going to the lake, calling on Jesus. 